First, uh, I just want to uh, let you know that um, it's exciting for me to see one of the wrestlers I've been fortunate to have a little bit of piece of coaching, Harrison Honeycutt, who's just recently um, been ranked number five in the country. I'll be honest with you, I'm a little frustrated that's just five. That hopefully keeps you, keeps you working and uh, getting after it. He's got a, a college visit to Kent State. And I think it would be very wise for any of you that have great goals and dreams in the sport of wrestling to ask him what it was like when he first started. What grade were you in when you first started? Fifth. Fifth grade. So he didn't start when he was five years old. He started in fifth. He wasn't a superstar at, 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 in seventh grade. But ask him about when did the switch happen? When did the switch happen? When did you realize that you needed to do these kinds of wrestling tournaments? And he specifically went to certain tournaments to test himself. And now he's looking at, and, uh, and uh, he's got a long road ahead. Because as much is given, much is required. So if he goes to whatever university offers him something really nice, and he decides to go to that university, um, he's going to have a tough road to hoe. So I say this to, to offer encouragement to all of you, to give you some, hopefully some inspiration, to also give him some recognition that he deserves. And he is so uncomfortable to hear this stuff. It, it just doesn't like it. You'd rather just get the recognition on the mat, you won. All right, what's next after that? That's really the way he's wired. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure about that. But um, fifth in the country is pretty, uh, pretty impressive. Uh, in fact, I don't think there's anybody in, in the state of North Carolina who's ranked as high as Harrison is. But we do have some good wrestlers in this state. There's no question about it. So uh, he'll stay humble and, and get after and continue to work and look for the number one ranking after a state title, which is not automatically just handed over to him, he still has to earn it, he still has to work for it. Um, he has an opportunity to be one of the best high school wrestlers before he goes and tries to make a run at a national championship or All-American or all of the above. And who knows, if he still has a lot of gas in the tank, um, we might see him on the Olympic level, who knows? It's always a possibility, and that gets me very excited. Make one thing very, very clear. It doesn't mean if you don't have that goal, you're less of an athlete, you're less of a person. But I want you to know this, that it requires the same kind of focus and the same kind of work if you have goals and dreams in other areas of your life. Period. End of story. It's just that you don't always have, closing comment, you don't always have an example right there in front of you that you can look to and say, hey, can you tell me a little bit of how you did it? But most kids your age won't do it. My own son may be shy to go ahead and say, tell me how you did it. It seems corny. It seems odd. It seems uncomfortable. You may, it may be a rich blessing for you, though, if you open up and do it. Eddie, I didn't put you in that one, because I know you'll do that. You probably already asked. If you haven't, you better ask him. All right? All right, now we're going to go to some technique. Eddie, come on. All right, this is going to be off of an underhook. All right? Underhooks are here. Guys, short arms, hands on top. I can go to lots of different ways to get this underhook. Bottom line is I just take, I like to pop the chest first and come in for that underhook, circle inside, and drop my elbow down. Okay, I drop my elbow down, even though to control it, I want to keep, I want to keep his arm up. Okay, and what I want to do, just like most setups, is I want him to step to me. I want him to step, and once I make him step, I'm perpendicular to him right now. I drop that elbow down, tug it hard on that elbow, and I'm driving over that foot. You can see some space coming underneath. And I'm going to go to what's called a knee pick. Grab the knee right here. And it's not about me crashing in on the knee. It's about me running over that hand that has that knee, OK? And get to my knee pick. A lot of times, arm will come out, and we'll finish in a position just like this to score my two points, OK? You open this side. Arm to hook, OK? Make it stiff. I want to be perpendicular and hit that knee and run over that knee. Run over that knee, run over that knee, run over that knee, OK? He's being a good partner. You could grab the name, absolutely. Okay? You gotta be careful about this. Again, I use Eddie, he loves lateral drops. If you get a guy that has an angle more this way instead of this way, a lot of times what will happen is he'll just go right to a lateral drop, boom. Bring me right to my back. So you really gotta be careful. The key is pressure. The key is I wanna have some pressure so Eddie can't get his hips in front and launch me. So if I'm here like this, and I'm this way, it's going to be a little bit tougher for him to go ahead and hit that, that lateral drop. But the next one is a setup. So two moves today. I go ahead and I hit that pick. Eddie steps away. His head lowers down. 
I'm going to bang your head. He's going to pop it up. I'm going to lower my level, and I'm right in for a high crotch. A great move to hit after that miss. OK, again. Pop, underhook, make him step. This is the angle I want. And he's trying to help me out here, OK? Eddie steps away. His head's going to come down. I'm going to bang the head. He pops it up. High crotch. Chest up high. Finish to my double. Capiche? Knee pick. Miss the knee pick. High crotch off the under. On three. One, two, three. Let's go.